we had landed on McEwen Lake and were about to begin an adventure through the heart of northwestern Ontario's Wadakimi Provincial Park, a land of some 10,000 lakes and 2,000 kilometers of canoe routes. Our plan was to travel north on the Allen Water River through Wabakimi Lake to Whitewater Lake and then exit the park to the south through the Caribou River system. In total, the journey would last 11 days and cover some 250 kilometers. Perfect, we're good. Now hit, now hit the wave, hit the wave. Okay, keep your eyes peeled. Looks like we're good. Yeah, you can hit these. Let's eddy out to the left here. Here in Wabakimi, fire-driven swaths of black spruce and jack pine tower over thick carpets of sphagnum moss and provide shelter for a diverse range of creatures. Glacial activity and the retreat of Lake Agassiz some 10,000 years ago have provided for a sprawling array of vast lakes, tumbling rivers, and waterfalls. Indeed, the word Wabakimi itself derives from the Ojibwe term for white water a probable reference to the scores of rapids and waterfalls and windswept lakes that characterize the region. The route is also distinguished by a fascinating human heritage. Archaeological records, particularly north of the park along the Albany River, suggest that indigenous peoples have populated the area for some 7,000 years. The original inhabitants lived semi-nomadic lifestyles, shifting habitation according to the availability of seasonal food sources. Innumerable, well-preserved indigenous pictograph sites remain here to this day, as do portage trails and campsites, which themselves are relics of a bygone age. rockscapes formed by glacial activity account for a quarter of the park's total surface area. 
these barren stretches of lichen-covered rock not only provide excellent opportunities for canoe camping, but also prime habitat for the provincially threatened woodland caribou, also known as the grey ghost of the boreal forest for its elusive nature. We'd be lucky to see one. Okay, so we're gonna go left here. Yeah. Just stay straight, right? Yep. No, we're good. Go hit these all. A reminder of Wabakimi's fickle and unforgiving nature came as we approached the Wabakimi Lake crossing from the south. Here, calm conditions at the mouth of the bay gave way to large swells and cresting waves that forced us to find shelter early in the afternoon. The following day, we were again marooned as winds exceeded 80 kilometers an hour and made the lake impossible to cross. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stay right, stay right. It's all rocks. Stay right, guys. Stay right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just straight. Yeah, let's go Eddie over here. It's okay. Just stay in the boat, guys. Stay in the boat. We're gonna bump you to the edge. We're gonna bump them to the side. Stay, stay there. Holy fuck. Don't worry. Everything's solid. Holy fuck. You need to get more, mate. Wow. That's fucking cool. What? On the seventh day of our trip, we paddled a broad section of Whitewater Lake, the largest body of water in the park, en route to Best Island. After a couple of tough portages, we happened upon one of the most incredible creatures I've seen in the wild swimming in the water before us, the woodland caribou. Once bountiful, habitat degradation, fragmentation, and other factors continue to threaten those that remain in Ontario's wildlands. With only 300 inhabiting the park, and 5,000 remaining in the province, we were immensely fortunate to encounter this magnificent animal. After emerging from the water, it trotted regally along the shore, surprisingly indifferent to our presence. It loomed for a while, and then, just as quickly as it had entered into our view, it vanished into the woods without a trace, the living embodiment of all the magic and mystique of the wilderness. On Best Island, we came to the abandoned hermitage of Wendell Beckwith, another major point of interest along the route. A legendary figure in the area, Beckwith escaped from civilization in 1961 to the seclusion of an encampment on Best Island on Whitewater Lake. 
Here he lived until his death in 1980, conducting what he described as pure research of the natural world, apparently unencumbered by the distractions of modern society. Beckwith's Hermitage contains five log structures, three cabins, a shed, and an outhouse, all of which can be found in varying stages of decay. The most interesting and unique structure on the island, however, is a cabin that was Beckwith's principal dwelling, which he termed the snail for its shell-like circular appearance. The cabin, which was designed by Beckwith himself, includes a sleeping area, workbench, storage cabinets, a centrally located stove, and rotating heat shield that would have allowed Beckwith to optimize heat distribution during Wabakimi's brutally cold winters. Unfortunately, the snail is quickly being reclaimed by nature, and at the time of our visit, had a large hole in the ceiling, which is undoubtedly contributing to its rapid deterioration. Beckwith's story and the site of the cabin still, however, hold a strong allure for travelers in the region to this day. Hey buddy, what a trail, eh? Right, yeah. Kevin. Over our time here in Wabakimi, we experienced the fickle nature and full spectrum of the boreal's midsummer temperaments. Blistering heat, bone-chilling rain, gale force winds, furious thunderstorms, serene glassy waters, bluebird skies, and smoky sundowns. Wabakimi, with its sweeping fairy tale forests of spruce and feather moss, represents all that is extraordinary about the Canadian wilderness. The thrill of a dash down the challenging torrents of the Allen water, the surreal fire-ravaged rockscapes of Brennan Lake and the earth-shaking power of Brennan Falls, the ancient rock art, the chill of the western gales on Wabakimi Lake, the blast of the summer headwinds on Lone Breast Bay, the fading cabins of Best Island, and the grey ghosts of the boreal forest.